This isn't the prettiest landing I've ever seen. My wife couldn't agree more with you. <laughs> this is an old flagstone landing that probably popped and it looks like they tried to repair it and not very well, by the way. The only way to repair this is to excavate out all this flagstone. All right, Rob, to get started removing this flagstone, we're gonna use a chisel and a three pound hammer, okay? What I'm gonna have you do is set the chisel like this and drive it and remove the flagstone. I want you to move from the outside in, okay, because we don't want to loosen any of these brick. We've already got a few that are loose, and I can fix those, but I don't want you creating any more. So Good. hop over here, yep. grab the chisel, try to drive it underneath that piece of flagstone. You got safety glasses on? Yep. Do a little sharper angle, try to drive it right underneath it and pop it. that pop out now, Rob? Yeah, I think so. Yep. All right, give it right to me. Yep. I'll take that. The first one's done. We'll start on the other ones. Okay. All right, Rob, let's take a look here. Here's the new mortar bed they used to build up underneath the flagstone. Here's the original mortar bed. We not only have to get the flagstone out, but both layers of mortar have to come out too. Okay. Well, Rob, we've got all the mortar out. We're down to the original concrete. And if you look here, we're actually down about a half an inch. Now, if we wanted to put the original flagstone back, we could probably get away with it. But what I want to do is use thermal bluestone. What's that? Well, it's a piece of bluestone where they take a torch and pass it over it, giving it texture. That will give us traction. Right. But if you look here, this bluestone's an inch and a half thick, plus we need a half an inch of mortar underneath it. So we have to be down two inches below the brick. Using a rotary hammer with a chisel bit, we just start in the center and make a hole. Now we don't want to go too deep because if we take out too much, we have to replace it. All right, Rob, we're in good shape. We're down two and a half inches now. So I'm going to sweep off this existing concrete and I want you to take that sponge and rinse it off, get it nice and clean because we want a good contact between our existing concrete and our new mortar we're going to put in. These brick in front are loose, so what I want to do is remove them, chip out this mortar bed so I can reset the brick after we've put the bluestone in place. For our mortar today, we're using pre-mixed mortar mix. All you have to do is cut that open and pour it out. All right, and take that shovel, make a little hole in the middle for me, and I'm going to pour in a little bit of water. We want to mix this on the thick side. I don't want it too wet because if we do, the bluestone's just going to settle down when we put it in. Take a mix that up for me. Rob, these are the three pieces of bluestone that are going to make up your new landing. I had them cut to size at the stone yard. Now, this is the top of one stone with a thermal finish on it. It's nice and rough. This is the bottom of a stone, and that's smooth. So what I'm going to have you do is apply a bonding agent to it before we set it in the mortar. Rob, a little easy on the edges there. I don't want any of this to run down onto the top of the stone. It's okay. a bear to get off. All right. Now for the mortar, I'm going to lay in a bed that's just a little bit wider than the stone. The stone's 18, so I'm going to come out about 20 inches. But the important thing to remember is that the stone is an inch and a half thick. So I want to be a little proud of that, an inch and a quarter with my mortar, and then I'm just going to tamp the stone down lightly. I'm going to spread it as much as I can with a shovel and then finish it off with a hand trowel. Take him back up the steps. Be real careful. Yep. All right, now, grab it from this edge. Got that? Yep. Okay, come down into me. Yep. Just hold on till I get my fingers out. Yep. All right. Lay it down in. Lay it down. Okay. We're looking for about a half inch gap on each edge. Now what we got to do is just grab the rubber hammer, and we're just going to tamp it down into place. Get it right down flush with these, all right? 
Now you notice we just laid enough mortar to set our first piece. If I'd filled the whole top in with mortar, there'd be no place for you to work. Good idea, Roger. Let's get the next piece. Okay. Okay, Rob, you got it? Yep. Swing around. Yep. Put your hand where it's not gonna hit the brick, all yep. right? Yep. Now you got room to work there, so let me get my fingers out. Yep. Okay, you good? I'm good. Right in there. Okay. Rob, that's great that you're cleaning up as we go along. Now, I have to mix up one more batch of mortar for the joints. The mortar's the same, but to the water, I'm gonna put in an additive. And wh what's the additive for? That's gonna make the mortar more flexible in the joints. Okay, we just add that in and we'll mix it up. You wanna pour some in for me? Okay, sure. Okay, pour a little right here in the middle for me. Okay, let me try with that. All right, we're just gonna load up the big trowel and take the little trowel and work this into the joint and pack it in. Now, we don't wanna get the mortar all over the place. I want you to be just as neat as you can. Fill the joint to the top, and then we'll come in and tool it off. Gotcha. Now, while you do those joints, I'm just gonna use the same mortar to reset the loose brick. Rob, all we have left to do is finish off these joints with our joining tool. This is a half inch joining tool with a concave edge on it. We're just gonna finish off all these joints nicely and wash it down one more time. Looking good. Well, Rob, what do you think? It looks great and it's gonna be a lot safer, that's for sure. Thanks a lot for coming out, Roger. Oh, happy to help.